All right, folks. Uh, welcome to another episode of Mirror Coffee Roasters Warm Up Sessions, and uh, we're about to uh, pour some batch. It's tasty. Let's do it. Beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> it's oh, like. I'm still using the chalice. I don't, I don't know why you. I don't, I'm, I'm just so, why? I'm not sure. Well, I am. I am. I, I do know why I'm still using the chalice. It's because my taster has broken. Oh, dude. Yeah, that was that was pretty. Dude, that was that was like such a melodramatic break too. It goes like, ching, ching, yeah, ching. and you're like, did something was, break? Yeah. <laughs> Awful. Yeah. Citrus. Some chaos outside. Jeez. What's going on, yeah. folks? Yeah, a little, uh, kind of a little, I hate to say this. I was going to say stone fruit, but I'm wrong. But it had something in there, like that kind of a smell, like dried stone fruit. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, surprisingly, this batch is pretty good. Yeah, it's a, it has this like, I hate to say this again, <laughs> like a compote. Is that what it's called? A compote. compote. Yeah, uh, that's Russian, like a yeah. like a cherry. Yeah, it's like ca- a cooked has cherry like a, a juice, a, like a warm cherry yeah, like juice. A, yeah. Which is kind of weird. Like, I've never... Mm -hmm. But it's not, like, overwhelmingly sweet. Uh, This reminds me a lot of... I mean, once again, bad comparison. But it reminds me a lot of the bold bean or Rwanda. That natural that we were serving. We're still serving at Makeworth. It's got that cherry uh, cherry wine or cheer wine. Cheer wine um, flavor. It's not exactly like a cherry Coke. It's more or less like, a, I don't know, like you said, like a warm cherry uh, juice, almost like a cherry cider. Yeah. Something like that. Kind of tastes like a, yeah, like in the cider realm. You know how apple yeah. cider is warm? Like yeah. especially yeah. in, yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, this, I, wow. <laughs> is it, actually, I breathe this multiple times, to- actually a lot of yeah. times on pour over. It's actually never turned out this good. I'm kind of yeah. confused why. When I had it at your house, was it on pour over or the Bonavita batch? Just the Bonavita batch. It wasn't this good. It wasn't. Not yeah. even close. Oh, dude. It's, it's good. Yeah. I it's, like it. It's pretty it's a very solid. good batch brew coffee. Yeah. It's. Yeah. You can drink it black. You probably can add a little bit of creamer and some yeah. sugar. It'd still go. Yeah. Dude, I can jive with this. It's so awesome. Um, uh, yeah, this is, uh, just to give a little shout out, uh, this is from Madcap, mm-hmm. uh, Coffee Roasters. Um, it's their, uh, pretty much their Guatemala, uh, Jorge Hue Tenango from, uh, El Panal from Jorge Mendez, mm-hmm. which, um, uh, I don't want to be dropping any hints, you know, but, uh, we might be, uh, this might be our second year purchase from, you know, Mr. Jorge. I don't know, you know, just great. We call it, um. The Mirror Project MJ. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's the reveal. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it, it's a solid batch. Um, you know, so, so, yeah, just a solid brew. I'm kind of like blown away by this uh, just because of the experiences that I've had with mm-hmm. it, you know. So, um, I yeah. Think, yeah. I was going to say one last thing about the coffee before we move into our topic. Um, I think both for you and I, like our coffee buying habits have changed a lot and like the, the intention and purpose behind it. Cause we seem to be buying more coffees that have something to do with us trying to see how other folks are roasting the coffees mm-hmm. that we're buying, the green coffee that we're buying. Yeah. You know? So you buying Jorge Mendes, me buying the, um, Kelowna coffee because of yeah. Kima Colombia. So stuff like that, which that excites me. That's a big thing. Like, I love tasting 
uh, the same coffees that we have, but from other roasters, because there's similarities and differences. It's actually, yeah, it's actually yeah. fun and exciting. And the cool thing is, like, especially when I know not only who the company is, mm-hmm. I kind of know like what went on in the background of that kind of a decision. Yeah. But also knowing who the importers are because I we work with them. Yeah. And knowing who the producer is because we've worked with them. Yeah it actually feels like I'm putting back money into my own family. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Totally. Yeah. I don't know why I worded it that way, but that I felt like that was the only way to say it is that like buying coffee from, it feels like from other people that I've also from other people who are working with the people that I work with feels like a big circle that I'm just Mm -hmm. like putting money right back into that circle that is later benefiting not only, you know, Madcap, the producer, the importer, but mm-hmm. also me in that long run because yeah. Jorge is now getting his coffee, you know, bought yeah. and all, all this stuff. So exactly. it's like this nice, this awesome full circle thing. And um, honestly, like a lot of people, uh, which ties in what we were talking about, because like a lot of people uh, will often ask us like, hey, when are you guys starting your brick and mortar? When are you mm-hmm. guys starting your cafe? And um And, you know, there are things that as a roasting company that you can do that you can't do as a cafe. Mm -hmm. Unless you're a cafe roastery, then that kind of broadens uh, what you could do. But as a cafe roastery, there's also some things that like that make things challenging to do a lot of things, especially when you're young in the business and, um, you know, running a business where only I mean, we're coming up on two years, which is bonkers, Mm -hmm. you know, but. Uh, there's some difficulties there, which we'll, we'll unpack shortly. But, um, you know, my question is like to you, like, are we going to start a cafe? Are we going to do this million dollar question? That is the, I mean, I I think for the most part, we always talk about what would it look like? What would a mirror cafe look like? Mm -hmm. We talk about the concept. Um, would we, I mean, sure. It's possible. Um, I I wouldn't say we're actively pursuing starting a cafe and it's hard to say as to why not. I mean, I don't know. It's because both, I think for me, like I already work at a cafe, so I have the coffee experience or the cafe experience like day to day all the time. And then working and roasting at Mir, I have that side of experience. So to a degree, I feel like I'm already doing that, even though it's not under one roof. Mm-hmm. So there's like, maybe maybe the right way to put it, there's no like major craving to have to push a mirror brick and mortar. Yeah. But I think for you, it's also a different perspective because you don't oh, yeah. actively work in a cafe. Oh yeah. Um, so there's that desire, but all, yeah. all of it has to do, I guess, around the desire of like, how can mirror serve um, people like maybe on a, not better, better is not the right word, but on a different degree. Right. Yeah. I think the, the conversation that oftentimes arises when we're talking about, man, what, what would a mirror cafe look like is if it, if there was a mirror cafe, uh, um, I'll tell you it would have to be next level. (laughs) Yeah. It's not going to be a cafe where you can just show up get a coffee and go like, it's not just going to be a cafe. Yeah. That's the key. And the and because it's just like, I feel like there's just too much of that. And, uh, and I don't know, there was this conversation that we had like, uh, like a month ago or something where I was like, you know, there's probably like a million different ways to run a cafe or Mm -hmm. a roasting company and all of the roasting company owners, business owners are running it maybe in a small 1% fraction of all yeah. the different possibilities. So in other words, if that sounded confusing to you, what I meant was like, there's probably so many different ways that you could pull this off and there's endless creativity and imagination right. so that you can apply talked about, yeah. to this cafe space, to this roasting company, where just doing it like everybody else is... Well, you're, you're, you're just kind of doing what, what everybody else is doing. And mm-hmm. like Amir, I feel like we cherish the creative process a lot. 
mm-hmm. like just not just in our you know whether as a business owners as mm-hmm. roasters as whatever it is but even outside of roasting we do a lot of creative work like mm-hmm. that's in our ethos and so w- for me i'm like oh no like if we were to start a cafe it would have to be like something very like a very powerful and intimate experience mm-hmm that better serves every single people person that comes in like the how we would serve people and the infrastructure and how it Mm -hmm. functions would have to be like literally bonkers like to the point where i like it it would just have to be out of this world yeah and i will say one of the perks of starting a cafe is that there are there are certain things that you can do as a cafe owner that you cannot do you cannot serve people the way for example like us who just own a roasting company yeah. without even a storefront like nobody can show up at the roastery yeah like there's actually unique ways and opportunities creative ways that you can serve people yeah. and give them like a very tangible experiential experience yeah whereas a roasting company we can so there there's a so to say that starting a cafe is just like there's no point of it or it's bad or it's um, worse than starting a roasting company. It's probably not true. No, because to a degree it's still meeting the general public in where they're at. Um, Because for us, a lot of the times we purchase coffee online and that's, I would say for the most part for us, that's completely normal. Rarely. I mean, if, if we do purchase coffee, that's not online, that's in person. It's either because we're visiting someone or, we're like, I don't want to say dire need because if we're in dire need, we just go to the roastery. Yeah. But sometimes, like, you'll pick up woods. Yeah, it's like one of, just cause. I mean, it's yeah, yeah from one of the two, three roasting companies in town. Yeah, That's exactly. It. So it's like, but if we want to have, for example, some Canberra coffee, we just go into the cafe and, and have a sip of Canberra oh, coffee yeah, instead exactly. of That's buying. True. You know That's what true. I mean? But when it comes to getting that um, coffee experience for us, it's usually ordering online and getting it like brought to our house. That's our coffee experience. But I would say like predominantly the general public is not in that kind of sphere of um, purchasing coffee or experiencing coffee in general. Majority of the time, if someone wants to get a quality, you know, cup of coffee, they're going to go to a cafe yeah. because one, they don't feel like they can brew it at home to the degree that a cafe can, or they can't find the actual coffee beans that they believe are high quality in like a grocery store. Yeah. So they have to go to a cafe instead of ordering online because it, I mean, it, it's strange. Like for us, like on a practical level, like most of the folks that we talk to, we know we always say like, Hey, like if you want to buy coffee, if you want to buy mirror coffee, you can easily buy it online. We'll bring it to your house. And we find that a lot of those people still go to make worth. And yeah. it's like, it, it, I think it, a lot of it has to do with that habit, but also um, the demographic that one we're targeting, but in general, the demographic in our city yeah. is still at a place where the most comfortable or comforting or the most traditional way to purchase coffee is to physically go. Yeah, and there's something beautiful in that experience yeah. to go into a cafe, to sit down. like, And yeah, oftentimes people also look at, it's kind of strange to say, but still nowadays people see brewing coffee at home as just a cheap way out. Yeah. Not a prestigious mm-hmm. way out. Like, like, for example, when I brew, for example, in this space up here, I'm like, oh, I have the freaking EK right there. I have right. like, what is it like? stepless grind yeah exactly. like I, could, I could grind to anything i want i have a batch brewer yeah. i have a i can make a pour over i can do it on a flat base i can do it on a v60 i can dial that in to pristine you know exactly how i want it but it's interesting that still the majority of coffee drinkers still see as the cafe experience as being much more prestigious and tastier where for me i'm like I mean, I'm not, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not a su- I'm not, I'm not a Brewers Cup champion, yes. but oftentimes <laughs> I would actually be more satisfied with a brew that I can make here with all my gear than going to a cafe and 
pretty much ordering a pour over there. Yeah. Where it's it's a better experience for me. Where for yeah. most of people, um, that's not quite the case. Yeah. Even though that is still appropriate, that their experience of going to a cafe is higher and better than brewing at home, yeah. which is also actually also unfortunate because that means that you're missing out on brewing at home. Yeah. Great coffee. Yeah. And I think a lot of the times when the conversation goes towards um, like, oh, are y'all going to have a brick and mortar? Yeah. It also feels like and maybe this is me just reading into it or me being, yeah. I don't know, insecure about it. Or I, I don't Maybe it's just me. Yeah. But sometimes when that question is posed, it feels like, oh, you own a roasting company, but that's just a stepping stone to what everybody yeah. wants to have. And that's a brick and mortar. And once you cafe, have a cafe, you're like, you've you arrived, made yeah. you made it like, this is it. Yeah. Now you have to succeed in reproducing this exact brick and mortar model. Um, and I, I think the reason that may, or it, d- it does bother me to a degree is because like, I value the roasting process, but I also value where the roaster or the roasting company is placed in the whole progress of the supply chain. Mm -hmm. Um, I was just recently talking um, to uh, Corey, the cafe owner, Makeworth Market, and another staff member about the fact that a roaster actually holds different, like a major part of the supply chain, like the coffee farmer and then the coffee consumer. And to me, that brings a lot of purpose. Like, I love the fact that we get to do that. Um, So to me, it doesn't feel like owning a roasting company is a stepping stone to having a cafe. For me, it feels like we have actually arrived. This is it, yeah. Yeah. Yet, I I still understand what folks mean by that. Yeah, yeah. You see what I mean? There's like a little bit of a um, tension there. Yeah. For sure. And there's, I like what you said in the beginning where it's like, how can we better serve people? Mm-hmm. And there's an experience that we're offering, you know, as maybe as somebody who owns a cafe, there's an experience that they're offering to guests coming in to us, coffee drinkers coming in um, and experiencing this space. But for us also a big part of like serving people was you know, when we was just starting the roasting company, there was a lot of things that we had to decide. And one of the core things that we were building this on was this uh, idea and this passion about, you know, s- doing the work that we're doing right now in Indonesia. Yeah. Like, I mean, the, the the fact that like we just built a greenhouse in Indonesia through, you know, our buddy Taylor, who yeah. works there firsthand with coffee farmers and producers, yeah. that those kinds of things for us was like, this is the stuff that makes our, I don't know, you know, get the, it just gets us jazzed about what we're doing. And if you just own a cafe, you don't quite have that kind of those connections and that access just quite like the roaster does. Yeah. And, um, and for us, like realizing like, oh, we as roasters, as a roasting company, we have the opportunity to serve farmers and producers and importers people overseas and because of our past background of yeah. spending so much time overseas traveling yeah. you know serving people whatever it is is that like that was where it was at for us well yeah. we're like how can we better serve them but the cool thing was like realizing that the time and the the day and age that we live in where it's like it's not that we don't get to serve people at home now we still do. Like yeah. we've shipped coffees all over the United States, even to other countries. Yeah. Um, and the cool part is that like, not only do we get an opportunity to serve people, you know, the, the people working hard behind this coffee mm-hmm. bean that we actually like, but now people are allowing us to ship things to their home. Like how much more intimate does that get? Yeah. We're like shipping them a little postcard from yeah. Ethiopia in yeah. the form of beans. Yep. We're shipping it straight to their home and they get to enjoy it at home. And that's just another avenue for us to serve people that way instead of like a cafe space. Yeah. Because in reality also, a cafe space takes a lot more energy, time, work. Um, It's so much more of a complex organism than running a roasting company. And that's... I could be wrong, but that's kind of how what, what our experience oh, has been sure. like. Oh, for sure, yeah. And 
for us, we didn't want to overwhelm us with those things、mm-hmm. when our focus was, oh, we want to serve the people at Origin、yeah. and serve them, but also take what they have to offer and pass it on to the people、yeah. in our country that can enjoy that. Yeah. So be, being a coffee roaster made way more sense. Yeah. Than trying to accomplish that as a, co- like a cafe. Yeah. Like we had to be a coffee roaster. Yeah. And it still opens up the idea of like, man, is like starting a cafe the next way to go? And yeah, yeah we'll dream about it. Maybe.、Yeah. Who knows? But at the end of the day, because the ethos was focusing on the coffee producers, the farmers, Um, the folks who are actually growing the seed yeah, yeah. and then making that like connection with people who are drinking it. The only way to do that at that point and at this point right now was through roasting that coffee, which I, th- I think is excellent because that's,、yeah. I mean, not to get cheesy, that's really what the name mirror means. Like that's literally how we're using the mirror to reflect from there. To there. And I think it would be, like you said, the logistics and all the spokes in the wheel、um, of a cafe would be overwhelming, just、yeah. especially just for the two of us、yeah. who just started a business、um, to have to make everything work and、yeah. make everything be a reflective piece.、Yeah. Would be super hard to do with excellence. And both you and I,、with、we excellence, value、yeah. excellence. Like, We、yeah. take so much time making decisions because、yeah. we want to make sure that we intentionally made a decision and、yeah. this decision is going to be carried out in excellence. I'm, I'm, so that's,、yeah. a, that's a big part of our ethos is we want to reflect, but we want to reflect with excellence. With excellence, yeah. yeah. I, we're reflecting a clear image, not、yeah. a distorted one because we had to scurry to make it happen. You know?、yeah. I'm glad you brought that up because. Yeah, it's like one thing to you know, start a cafe and just, just have it be moving along, chugging along, and it will. And like, would we be able to pull it off? Yeah, I, I actually do believe that we'd be able to pull it off.、Mm-hmm. But I don't want to be pulling something off just to pull it off and just to have it exist. Yeah. I, I, I'm, or, I'm a, or shush the critics of、yeah. becoming successful or yeah. the yeah. we have arrived.、Yeah. Look at us. Of course. Like, it's not but, the point. Yeah, but. To me, it just made more sense and it, looked, it felt more powerful and more true to who we are and what we want to accomplish to say, hey, we're going to start something that's different than a cafe, but it's also closer to what we actually want to do as a, as, I mean, throw the, throw the concept of a business out. We'd still probably be doing something along these lines. Yeah. And that、sure. was kind of、mm-hmm. like the thought behind it, where it's like, Like, I, I, what we're doing, I want to do with excellence really, really well and really intentional and really just have myself poured out into this thing.、Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, even if that was, you know, without like running a business, like something that's so true to who we are. Yeah. Yeah. I, one that has a lot to do with, like you said, it's who we are, but also the fact that, like, Why, why overwhelm ourselves? You know what I mean? Why、yeah. add an extra thing when we have something going that we already believe in? And to a degree, we're growing in it of itself, like as in roasting coffee, as in presenting coffee to people who are brewing at home or in cafes.、Yeah. Like we can grow in that area. Yeah. And that can develop.、Of、and、course. maybe. That will develop into our own brick and mortar、yeah. like cafe. But if it doesn't, it will still develop and grow into、yeah. being able to reflect from the producer to folks who are drinking coffee.、Yeah. That's still going to happen. You know what I mean? Regardless, it'll multiply and how it will multiply and how it'll grow.、Yeah. We don't know yet. We're still trying to figure that out, but it, it will continue、yeah. to go that way. Even, I mean, even if it just doesn't even, yeah, like, And the, the anchoring point is something so different than just having、um, something we call a coffee shop.、Mm-hmm. That's not the anchor point, you know?、Um, and、uh, to, to fulfill this anchor point and to stay rooted on this thing that we believe in and we're pursuing,、uh, 
Um, sometimes it might look like, you know, the conversation we had just a couple nights ago where it, what if it was a bed and breakfast? Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. That was dope. Like what if it's a freaking bread and breakfast? Yeah. Bread, bread and breakfast. Uh, bread. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, is it yeah. decaf? Yeah. Decaf. <laughs> no. Um, what if it, you know, what if yeah. it's a bed and breakfast? Yeah. And if that's what it needs to be mm -hmm. five years from now, if that's what it needs to grow into, then let's do it, yeah. you know? And that's something that I think like there's a lot of business advice you can find on how to run a cafe, how to run a roasting company, how to run a bed and breakfast, you know, how to do everything. Literally, there's so much information out there. Yeah. What nobody will be able to tell you is your ethos. Yeah. Is what wakes you up in the morning, what tells you, you let's go, let's get the show on the road. What wakes you up? What keeps you breathing? That stuff you cannot learn in a textbook. Yeah. And I mean, ultimately, that should be your definition of success. You know, this all ties back to last week's episode, right? Of, of staying in your lane. Yeah. Like you can't talk totally. about this. You can't talk about mirror the cafe yeah. without bringing back the conversation. Like, you know, what is our lane? Yeah. Like, does our lane have a cafe in it or is it just a roasting company? Yeah. Are we going to educate folks to brew coffee at home so well and so comfortably yeah. that their coffee experience is like amazing at home with our coffee beans? Maybe that's something we might need to like develop more. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. But at the end of the day, like it's, we're, we're heading in this direction yeah. We're going to keep going in this direction. We're going to see how the, uh, what and what it's going to develop into. Yeah. But we're committed to what? The producer and the coffee drinker or the consumer. Yeah. And being that chain link yeah. in between them um, and playing that vital ro role. But once again, not just being in that role because there are many people in that role right now. Yeah. But uh, just like I said, like, if we were to have a cafe, it would have to be just unreal. I don't just want to be in this role. I want to be unreal in this role. Yeah. And that, when we started, we said, what we're doing is like a 10-year plan. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what I'm jazzed about. Yeah. It's so good. I'm just, oh, man. There's so much to say. Um. I was just talking to somebody a couple of days ago. We're going to wrap it up right now. I was just talking to somebody a couple of days ago and I was like, I just told him, I'm like, I hope the peak of my career is like 20 years from now. Mm. I don't want the peak of my career to be in five years. I don't want it to be in two years. I don't, I don't want Mirror to blow up right now and become the biggest it's ever going to be. Dude, there's always more room for sure. Chewy. All right, folks. Thanks for listening. And uh, we'll see you guys in the next one.